This is Raymond Solder with a report on Ukraine for Tuesday, April 5th, 2020. Ukraine's top prosecutor says the bodies of 410 dead civilians have been found so far in recently liberated towns outside Kyiv, a massacre that is more and more being called planned genocide. The bodies were found buried in mass graves, stuffed in sewers, and scattered in plain sight in the streets of Urban, Buka, and Hostomel. Like the picture next to me that was taken in Burka just five hours ago, Ukrainian officials have already seen enough to determine that concentrated evil swept through these towns and the atrocities were meant to be covered up. Ukrainian Prosecutor General Erna Venegitova said people today are so stressed that they're physically unable to speak, describing attempts to interview witnesses and piece together what happened during the Russian occupation of these towns. Venik Titova said she's asking the Ukrainian Health Ministry to provide as many forensic experts as possible to staff a field hospital set up in the Kiev region. The mayor of Buka said 400 residents were killed by Russian troops in the three towns while Chechen soldiers control the area. Satellite imagery dating back to March 10th allegedly shows the trenches for the gravesite in Buka already being dug. Mikhailo Podolyak, an advisor to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, on Sunday said Russia came into Ukraine with military bands and columns of the Rose Guard, but they were followed by mobile crematories. Why do you need them if you don't believe in resistance? Now we know to hide war crimes. This isn't a performer's mistake. This is planned genocide. Podolyak noted men and women were killed with their hands tied behind their backs. The worst crimes of Nazism have returned. This was purposely done by Russia. Zelensky said in his nightly address on Sunday that Russian soldiers deserve to die for the atrocities outside Kyiv. In Zelensky's words, they're deprived of everything humane. There is no soul. There is no heart. There is concentrated evil, and it's come into our land. Murderers, butchers, rapists, looters, who call themselves an army, who only deserve to die after what they've done. As atrocious images and news concerning mass graves and signs of civilian torture circulate the globe. Efforts to document and prosecute war crimes in Ukraine are reaching a new level of urgency. Mark Berlin, an international law professor at Marquette University, said the citizens who are bound weren't a threat to military forces. Detaining them in the first place was unlawful, and once they were detained, there was no basis to commit violence against them. Killing civilians is a war crime. As pictures of the mass civilian casualties have emerged from Buka, they've continued to spark outrage across the world. The White House says it will announce a new round 
of Russian sanctions later this week, and the European Union will send investigators into Ukraine in order to help document potential war crimes there. The evidence points to a number of crimes that could be prosecuted before the International Criminal Court, such as crimes against humanity, proving that a genocide has taken place, on the other hand, is extremely difficult. Professor Berlin explained, what's particularly special about genocide as a crime is that it requires a special kind of intent. It's not enough to kill a lot of members of a minority group. There also has to be intent to destroy that group as a whole or part. There has to be intent to bring about the destruction of a group. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said Monday that the threshold has not yet been reached. Jake said, based on what we've seen before, we've seen atrocities and we've seen war crimes. We haven't yet seen a level of systematic deprivation of life from the Ukrainian people to rise to the level of genocide. The federal government has set up a war crimes investigation unit. Sullivan added that he named and named several other groups collecting evidence including non-governmental organizations and journalists that can counter any relentless disinformation emanating from Russia. The White House first began accusing Russia of committing war crimes in mid-March and has done so more frequently and in greater detail since. President Joe Biden began this week by calling for a war crimes trial against Russian President Vladimir Putin, though he stopped short of using the term genocide. And that's the appropriate take at this point, says Berlin. Berlin said, seems almost indisputably to be a war crime. The citizens were bound weren't a threat to military forces. Detaining them in the first place was unlawful. And once they were detained, they weren't a threat. So there's no basis to commit violence against them. Killing civilians is a war crime. A man in a bright blue fleece was found hunched over the steering wheel of a crushed car at an intersection in the center of town. Another was found on his back on the side of the road with a single bullet through his head. His mangled green bicycle lay beside him. Several civilians had been stuffed in sewers and others found in those mass graves. Renewed allegations of war crimes came after multiple corpses were found with a wrist bound behind them and other signs of torture. Berlin said the Biden administration is using reasonable caution in avoiding the term genocide so far to the, the unique stigma and high legal threshold that must be crossed for it to come into play. He said Biden may have access to intelligence that we don't have, but I don't think it's possible based on what's been reported publicly to make a legal determination at this point. I think caution is prudent in this scenario. The process of prosecuting such crimes can happen in a few different ways, but is most commonly handled with the International Criminal Court, headquartered in The Hague, Netherlands. 
and operating under international law. The wheels of justice grind slowly. For example, the ICC only recently announced it was seeking arrest warrants related to Russia's 2008 war against Georgia. And it may be years before Russian commanders and generals face prosecution, much less Putin. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin denies his troops have done anything wrong in their fighting against Ukraine. This is Ray. You know, I'm still trying to sort out in my mind why the Ukrainian invasion itself and all the killing and destruction that's occurred throughout the country since February 4th, why that doesn't prove that Russia is trying to systematically destroy every living Ukrainian. Isn't that genocide?